In this video, we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at some one day that'll roll right off my tongue. We're going to be looking at editable, not an edible. Although I'm sure you could do an edit an edible and watch this video on editable. But what we're going to do is look at that. We're going to check out the docs, make sure we haven't missed anything. And then because it's kind of a straightforward component, we only got one example for you. And then we're going to be kind of one and done with that. So let's get to the docs here. And we see that it says that an editable text is used for inline renaming of some text. So that means we're going to change it. It appears as normal UI text, but transforms into a text input field when the user clicks on or focuses it. So we're going to be using an editable, an editable input, and then a preview. Okay. The editable, the wrapper component that provides context value. By now, we've seen a lot of wrapper components, so this should be pretty straightforward. The edit view of the component uh, for editable input here, it shows you when you click or focus on the text, and then the editable preview, the read only view of the component. And when we see it here, this is almost like silly. It's so straightforward. We have that wrapping component. We have the default value in here, which is take some chakra. And then all we have to do is just slap the editable preview and the input in here, and we get this. That's really cool. And so we could click in here and we could just, um, you know, say sub to my channel. Some shameless plug in there, right? We click off, and then we have the editable preview doing its work, and we click on it the editable input is doing its work for us. So as we scroll down here, we could see more stuff. In some cases, you might need to use custom controls to toggle the edit and read mode. We use the render prop pattern to provide access to the internal state of the component here. And so they give this big old example up here. And we're, you know, I'm not gonna walk all the way through this because I think the example I have is pretty decent enough here. And if not, and you need me to, you know, explain anything or possibly if there's enough to make a new video, I could do that as well. But essentially, they're just making a thing when you click on there, it, you know, it turns it into this edit mode up here. This ends up saving it to a degree. This, you know, cancels out of what you're doing here. I think this is a little bit complex of an, uh, an example for, you know, basically doing this right here. And then we have the props down below. So I know it feels like I didn't really jump on this with custom controls here. I think my example is going to speak for itself. And if it doesn't, let me know below. But hey, let's get to coding. In this first example, let's make an editable. Although I do want to say editable because those are very close words. But let's make a very basic editable and play around with it. We can see here that for some just very, very, very basic, you know, three real components in here, we have this. And so we have the editable, which the default value is take some chakra, just something I came up with off the top of my head. We have gray 100 in the background here. We have the text align center. So if I wanted to come in and say, you know, order me some gosh darn pizza. We could come here and do that. And now as we click away, we still see that it retains its value in here. So now that we have this basic editable here, which everything at the base is a box, how do we deal with the data coming in and out of here, right? Because this essentially is probably going to go in a form of some kind. So how do we grab it and then pass it along to wherever it is we need it to go? We're going to do that actually in the next section. So now that we're here, what we're going to do is we're going to have our use state. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up. And then we're going to, well, um, save the information that's coming in. So let's go ahead and get our state set up and get moving from there.
Now that we have this here, let's talk about this code briefly. So it's not incredibly different from what we had before. Though we change the default value to value. So as you can see here, we have enter value up here, and then we have this right here. And so this may be a little bit redundant. So this says if we don't have a value, nothing is there. Say this is blank. We're going to put enter value up there. That is because sometimes you could enter this thing where if you have like one character in the state, it's fine. But if you don't handle it properly, you, you have to do this kind of weird song and dance where you can't have like an absence in the state. So no, no matter what at the base level, this is always going to say enter a value. And whenever I start typing, it's going to update the value in the state and show it there. So let's just go ahead and start doing that. Pizza Hut, that is awesome. So let's come here and let's do something like this. So now we have Pizza Hut up here. Let's do Pizza Hut 69, nice. And we see this updating in both places. But let's test out the logic of this value down here. So we have one letter left, and it goes back to enter value up here. So this is just one of the ways that you could work with data when you have an editable and you're typing stuff, deleting things. This is how I typically set up my logic. Um, if you have any suggestions, let me know down below. Uh, I'd like uh, y'all to like, share, subscribe, watch my videos. I like doing this stuff, and I'll see you all in the next one.